up that way. I'll call you later. Bye. Here's a question. Why do we use pop songs in films? What's this music? Well, like any element of filmmaking, music adds an additional level of meaning to a scene. It's an extra bit of text to be interpreted. And all sorts of fun can be had by mashing the two together. It can be used for ironic counterpoint, or to underscore the theme. Or just to embellish the emotionality of the scene. But all of these approaches rely on the audience being familiar with the song, and that's the key. Audiences have previous experience with these tracks, and filmmakers know this. Oh, that is very good to know. Here's a good example. But if staying here means working within 10 yards of you, frankly I'd rather have a job wiping Saddam Hussein's ass. Unless you've been living under a rock for 50 years, you know that respect is Aretha Franklin's signature song, and with that comes certain associations. We know it's a rallying cry for quality, but it's a female empowerment anthem, and that Aretha doesn't take shit from anybody. <laughs> so by layering it over this moment, the song's connotations are deliberately being brought to mind, and the filmmakers are asking you to apply them to the drama of the scene. So the film is telling us what sort of moment this is and how we should respond to it. Essentially, we're being told how to think. And there's nothing wrong with that per se, it's just simple shorthand, and filmmakers should be free to use whatever means they have at their disposal to make their point. In this case, what we're being asked to think about is fairly straightforward. But this sort of relationship can be much more complex. This is the first time we hear It's the Same Old Song by The Four Tops in the Coen Brothers' Blood Simple, and here it's used pretty casually. But it reappears later in the film, and when it does, it doesn't seem quite so innocuous. Our protagonist, Ray, turns up at the bar where he works to find his boss dead. I'm not going to explain the reasons why, because it would be a major spoiler, but he decides to clean up the crime and move the body. However, there are voices outside, and when we hear this familiar intro, it acts as a callback and we immediately know who it is. It's his co-worker. So the stakes have been raised, and the music very potently signifies this to the audience. And it does so by rendering the physical space of the scene in oral terms. There are two spaces at play here, the one off screen and this one, which is not safe. And the drama of the scene relies on keeping them distinct. And the fact that the song clearly comes on off screen but leaks into this space is an indication of how insecure the barrier between the two spaces are. Sound goes two ways, so if we can hear them outside, can they hear us? So the fact that the song plays the entire length of the scene means that the threat is ever present and we cannot forget about the off screen space. Okay, let's stop. I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with the previous point? Surely any track could have worked just as well for this purpose. Now I hear that and I raise you this. When the film was released on VHS, they did use a different song. The four tops had to be replaced for copyright reasons. Now I haven't seen that version, but I'm fairly certain it would have served the purpose of the scene fine. But there's an additional layer of meaning that comes from using it's the same old song that would have been lost when it was replaced. Let's have a history lesson. The story goes that when the group's previous single, I Can't Help Myself, reached the top of the US Billboard chart, their former record label, Columbia, attempted to capitalize on this success by re-releasing one of their earlier failed singles. When Motown chairman Barry Gordy heard of this, he decided to gazump Columbia, demanding from the team of Holland Dozier Holland a new single for the Four Tops to be written, recorded, and released within 24 hours. And they achieved this simply by recycling what had been so effective before and repurposing the chord progression from I Can't Help Myself. And they cheekily acknowledged this derivativeness by calling the new single It's the Same Old Song. So the track can be seen as a copy that acknowledges its status as a copy. And in postmodern theory, this is called a simulacra. But what does that have to do with issues in Blood Simple? Well, it's important to remember that the Coens are arch postmodernists. 
Either their films are a direct simulacrum or a deliberate pastiche of a specific genre, such as Mills Crossing, or else they are constructed out of various assembled simulacra, like The Hudsucker Proxy or The Big Lebowski, both of which are built out of bits and pieces of other films and genres. And so it is with Blood Simple. They set out as they meant to continue. It's a copy, a simulacrum, of earlier genre films, in this case the domestic noirs of the 40s, such as Double Indemnity and The Postman Always Rings Twice. I've always been big fans of you know, James M. Kane and sort of uh, American hard-boiled pulp fiction of the 30s and 40s. So it's the kind of story we decided to do. Of course, this begs the question, how is a simulacrum of a genre different from a straightforward example of the genre? Well, the answer is distance. Firstly, historical distance. Blood Simple comes well after the crest of the original noir wave, which of course was a style that was developed organically across a series of films that were all made independently of each other and only retroactively grouped together by critics. It wasn't a movement and it wasn't deliberate. And so by being a deliberate attempt at a noir, this already sets Blood Simple apart from the films it refers to. In making Blood Simple, the Coens are self-consciously working within a set of codified narrative rules and messing around with the generic iconography of the type of film we would now call noir. The windows were closed and the sunshine coming in through the Venetian blind showed up the dust in the air. And this leads us to the second type of distance, intellectual distance. Whilst of course the film is supposed to be involving and meant to be taken seriously, the audience is also expected to recognise and acknowledge the way in which the film self-consciously plays and teases the generic frame it's working within. This type of intellectual distance is another key facet of postmodern thought, and many films employ it, often by directly acknowledging the audience, or by drawing attention to the artifice of the film itself, or even sometimes both. In the industry, we call them cigarette burns. The Coens, in Blood Simple, don't go quite so far. Rather, they introduce this distance by nesting equally other self-referential texts within the narrative. It's the same old song as a record that explicitly tells the audience that it is a copy of an earlier record. And the Coens, assuming the audience's familiarity with the song's unique history, lay one text over the top of another and ask the audience to apply the song's meaning not only to the scene it was used in, but to the film as a whole. It's the same old song, and it's the same old story. 